All right, as promised, we are joined now by the former Human Rights Commissioner. He's now the Liberal MP for Goldstein in Victoria, and he joins us live from our Melbourne Stein. studio. I'm talking about Tim Wilson. Thanks very much for your company. Goldstein. Thanks, Peter, but it's Sorry, Goldstein. I, I'll call it Goldstein till the day I die, unfortunately, but I'll keep trying. Well, you need to. I'll yeah, keep you trying can try and correct just yourself. for you. Now, listen, let's get into a couple of key issues. We might start with the census just to get it out of the road. Unmitigated debacle, not really appropriate that the Prime Minister throws it all on the bureaucrats as a strong believer of ministerial responsibility. You'd agree with me on that, wouldn't you? Well, no, I think there has to be a degree of responsibility taken by the senior uh, executives in the ABS um, because in, all, in the end the government acts essentially as a board of, board of management uh, and they have to hold management accountable when they've given advice that things are taken uh, and, and are uh, being mm. dealt with and clearly they weren't. But should the, uh, government, now, I, should the government then be held accountable for leaving the position of head of the ABS open for about 10 or 11 months? Well, obviously there have been decisions that have been made that have informed the outcome that we've now got. And, of course, the government has taken uh, uh, some responsibility. Um, the public are holding us accountable for the failure of uh, the census, and that's why we have to make sure that it's fixed. Because when you look at the core jobs of government, of course, census is a part of that. Uh, and making sure that it's done professionally is very important mm. um, for confidence, not just with the census, but government generally. There was always, though, t Peter, I think we need to be very honest about this, there are always going to be teething problems when you move from a hard copy to going electronic for the first time in the way that it has. The only thing to do from this is to learn from it and to make sure it doesn't but happen surely, again. Surely That's you don't think that the site, the the site census, being Peter, shut and that is down for two whole days is teething problems. I mean, that's got to be a lot worse than teething problems. Oh, no, absolutely, and that's the point. There was always going to be teething problems. The problems that have occurred have been much greater than that. The Prime Minister himself has acknowledged that and expressed his uh, frustration and anger. I've got to say, as a local member of Parliament, uh, you get a large number of complaints directly, and uh, I've been trying to work and assist constituents as best I can to make sure that, most importantly, we learn from the experience mm. and it doesn't happen again. Craig, and public confidence is restored in the census your, process. Your Liberal colleague yesterday, Craig Kelly, told me on this program that he doesn't think that it would be appropriate for fines to now be applied to people, uh, given what has transpired. Do you agree with him about that? Well, considering... Uh, uh, you have until August, it was our September 23 to fill out the census. I mean, if you haven't managed in some way to fill, fill it out either by going online when the site is back up or requested, filled out, completed and resubmitted a paper copy, then I think uh, you're probably deliberately not doing it and then fines can apply. I mean, the government has rightly been flexible because of the situation that we all find ourselves in. Mm. What about the inner libertarian in you, though, Tim Wilson? The idea of a $180 a day fine into perpetuity uh, for not complying with something that's as compulsory as the census. You couldn't be too comfortable about that, could you? Well, I'm not a libertarian, Peter. I'm a liberal, and there's an important distinction. I'm uh, not as anarchic as some liberals, libertarians are. Uh, liberals recognise that freedom exists within a context, and a key part of that is having a structure and democracy to preserve that freedom. And the census has always been a part of it to make sure we have accurate and important information for the government to be able to do its job, but also so that it can be small and lean and effective rather than large, verbose and cumbersome um, in trying mm. to be all things to all people. Is it time that we throw the curtains open to what, whatever on earth is going on on Nauru. Uh, the Guardian have released 2,000 incident reports, a thousand of which deal with children, sexual abuse, cruelty, assaults and self-harm. Uh, after one Four Corners episode uh, in relation to what went on at one detention centre, juvenile detention centre up in the Northern Territory, we got a Royal Commission, uh, yet a thousand incident reports uh, and no such equivalent coming in terms of Nauru. Well, I think we need to be resolutely clear that there is no place for the abuse of children or sexual violence against others uh, in detention centres, onshore, offshore, and the Minister has made that clear, and I want to reiterate that as my view very strongly and will continue uh, to be my view very strongly. The challenge we've always had with offshore detention is making sure we preserve border security while making sure that we process and assess applicants on the basis of the legitimacy of their claim, but it has to be done in circumstances that are humane and if there is any 
uh, circumstance where that is not occurring, uh, then it should be reported uh, and there needs to be a, a response from the government. But, Peter, what you want is me to go out there and say a whole series of things against the policy to draw up uh, a, a media story so that you can circulate it continuously on air. My interest is in how we get the best outcomes for the people uh, who are uh, held and detained in Nauru uh, rather than giving media reports and so uh, I'm not going to be giving you any news breakthroughs today. Well my interest is really in whether or not these abuses are going to sort of continue or whether there's going to be serious action taken. Back in 2014 uh, when you were the Human Rights Commissioner, you urged the government not to ignore reports of child abuse on Nauru. Uh, two years on, there's a 1,000 toto of incident reports about exactly that thing. Uh, you must be horrified at whatever little respect the government paid to the words of the then Human Rights Commissioner, your good self, two years ago. Look at what's happened. I don't accept that, Peter. I mean, any complaint around uh, child abuse or sexual violence must be acted upon. If it has not been acted upon, then uh, there needs to be proper investigation to see why that is the case. Part of the challenge, and it's, it's always been part of the challenge of dealing with uh, offshore detention, is that there... And I have engaged with this even on onshore detention and with people who have raised complaints directly to me, to me either on offshore detention or through parties in Australia is trying to get a clear understanding about the facts and also making sure uh, that people aren't engaging in some sort of form of self-harm as a way to draw attention to themselves. Sorting through that information, particularly while preserving and protecting privacy, uh, is difficult and I don't have all the information in front of me to make an assessment on each case, but I can say that uh, these are the sorts of things that you know, I will be raising with the Minister the next time I see him because if there is any uh, sexual abuse or sexual violence or child abuse, then it needs to be acted upon. Well, because the Forgotten Children report that Gillian Triggs did, uh, and she says the government hasn't done enough in reacting to it, uh, you previously said that, quote, the worst thing we could do out of that report is distract even further from those forgotten children and the human consequences and addressing those challenges into the future. Do you feel like the government has done enough uh, to have no uh, dirt on its hands uh, in relation to what has now been uncovered by The Guardian is going on on Nauru since that time? Well, first we need to be honest, the, uh, intellectually honest. The Forgotten Children report was looking at issues of onshore detention. Uh, we're now talking about issues around offshore detention. Uh, and uh, the short answer is, uh, I don't know. Uh, as somebody who's only recently been elected, I've seen uh, what the government has done in public. Part of the challenge uh, is making sure we have a clear... I have a clear idea about what has happened behind uh, closed doors, because very often when we're dealing with asylum seeker policy, there are people who want to draw attention to themselves and aggrandise uh, on their positions to make themselves feel morally superior. That's not where my interest is. A lot of the best things done in the asylum seeker space is done quietly, respectfully, to deliver the best outcomes for people um, because we have to uh, make sure we don't send the wrong message to people smugglers. Is, is that your view? I mean, just before we run out of time, is your view that there is quite a bit going on quietly behind the scenes, including within the government, uh, as it considers how to respond to these sort of shocking numbers of what's going on and off? short attention, but it's the balance between that going on behind the scenes versus what we can talk about publicly without sending, what, a message which somehow opens the flood of boats. Is, is that the point? Essentially, that's the point, but it also uh, is incumbent on people like me, who care very deeply about these issues, who sit within the parliament, to raise them, but to raise them to affect outcomes rather than to focus on how we might draw attention to ourselves and compromise the outcome. That's the way I've always dealt with issues around asylum seekers in the past because my interest is about improving the circumstances for those people, not uh, focusing on getting a headline for myself. And uh, that is a frustrating process sometimes, but it's ne I think it is partly necessary to uh, preserve public confidence uh, in uh, making sure that the borders are secure and we are not sending the wrong message to people smugglers. Tim Wilson, always appreciate you finding the time to speak to us. Thanks once again today. Thanks, Peter. Cheers. Coming up after the break here on Newsday, we'll be back to sport, including the big news for Australian football, both here 